everybody. Today I want to show you part one of a podcast I shot with a really, really good friend of mine, Matthew Pennell. He's got an awesome podcast that we're going to link below. Check out part one, and next Wednesday you'll see part two. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the newest episode of the Entrepreneur's Edge podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Matt Pennell of Element Health and Wellness in Uptown Dallas, Texas. At our office, we focus on soft tissue and chiropractic adjustments to get people out of pain and back to activity quickly and effectively. So today, I have an old friend uh, on the podcast. Gosh, we've been buddies since we were little, and uh, he's down here for uh, a conference and so I was really excited. We've been talking about bringing him onto the podcast for quite a while. Uh, his line of business is, is really interesting. And then I think he takes a whole different entrepreneurial approach to it, which really just kind of blows the roof off of his industry. And, uh, you know, he's made a great name for himself uh, throughout our local area. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Jacob Godard of Scooters Lawn Care. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, I'll give you the little rundown. Um, you know, lawn and landscape. We got into it. It's crazy that it's something. Heck, I think weren't we working for the same person back in the day? Yeah. So at one point in time, uh, we were both working some some lawn care, and it was just kind of funny though because I think you may have done it before I had it. Uh, yeah. At some point, I don't know. At any point though, you know, I remember thinking about it, and I'm like, God, oh, this you know kind of sucks. I liked working outside, but I mean, our boss was an interesting guy. Yeah. Uh, but the thing about it was you handled it so much differently. Like at that point in time, I think I was still so ego-based in regards to like not wanting to work for somebody who mm -hmm. treats others that way. Not that that's, I don't think that that's wrong. However, at that point in time, it's like you're, you're working, you're building, you're yeah. growing, you're, you're, you're helping somebody else, but you're more or less learning what you don't like in mm -hmm. order so that you figure out what you do. And I felt like when you were working that company, I mean, I'm sure you guys had your differences, but you seem to handle it really well and learn a lot as you were Yeah, involved. I just, you know, I'm really good at dealing with hard to deal with people, <laughs> yeah. you know, and oh, yeah. obviously we won't say any names, but mm -hmm. I think anybody that worked there would say he's probably one of the hardest people yeah. to work for out there. I would agree. Um, and yeah, I never really thought I was going to get into lawn and landscape professionally and start a business out of it because when I moved away from me and Matthew's hometown to go to yeah. Springfield to get into auto body. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'd always wanted to own a business and it kind of eventually circled back around to it was one year I was really, really heavily looking at buying a body shop and getting into, I don't know if you ever knew that as I was looking into um, buying the one on dirt or on uh, Morton in Jacksonville. I didn't know that you were that looking. Thing? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know that. Uh, okay. I didn't know you were looking at buying one. I knew that you were working for one. Mm -hmm. And honestly, even just to rewind a little bit, like it's pretty wild. I mean, growing up, you know, Jacob and I were really close kindergarten. I mean, went to grade school, high school together, and he's actually the one who got me involved in racing we motocross. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Got me involved in racing motocross, and you know, our good friend Kai Ben was, you know, right there with us too. And uh, I mean, we always loved like going out to go to our house and, and riding all the dirt bikes and go-karts and having a lot of fun, shooting guns. Yeah. I think I. I drove a truck for the first time with your dad when I was like Your <laughs> parents were probably upset probably, about it or something. But yeah. they probably didn't know. Yeah. But uh, drove yeah, through the cornfield with him. Yeah. I mean, he was sitting right there. It wasn't mm -hmm. a big deal. But uh, just all the fun stuff, you know, growing up. And, you know, as we got into college, um, you know, you were working and I was in a different spot. And then it, I think then that's when you were starting to work for the body shop, right? Yeah. So I kind of, you know, I did a couple of years at Lincoln Land or, or whatever, right. whatever college it was, or uh, maybe even only a year. And then I realized quickly that, it, you know, I wanted a business or I was going to work for someone. Uh, school really had never been for me. I mean, yeah. I think you can attest for school was not something I was ever heavily into. Um, I think it's something that you could have. If, could have. If, you if there was, to. but yeah. Yeah, I've always Nothing been very, interested you that way. That, that's exactly yeah. it. Not to, not to knock it in the wrong way. It's just that I'm very focused on what I wanted and there wasn't anything that was leading me there in, in any of the schooling I'd seen. Unless we had a dirt bike magazine. In front Unless of us. we had a dirt bike magazine. In front of us. <laughs> that kept us plenty busy in high kept, school. Yeah. Kept us plenty Junior busy. high, high school, yeah. But yeah, so after, shortly after that, you know, I really heavily worked, put in a lot of time at the landscape company, moved to Springfield, got into auto body, 
And then, you know, it, it progressed at this final company that I was working at that I just, I'd always known I wanted to own a business. And I started to look at a body shop and I just realized the numbers to make it, you know, I couldn't fathom because it was going to be all me starting something. There was, I didn't really, couldn't fathom how expensive things were or what it was going to be. And that's what eventually led me down the road of, you know, I was working, I'd work 10 hour, 12 hour days at a body shop. And I had my new, my first house I'd ever set, ever bought, set up to paint cars at night. So I would work all day, paint all night and work on cars all night and work on them all weekend. And I just got where I was like, you know, let's do something else. I had a push mower and a little trailer that I bumped off my dad that we still use. Uh, Is that the one that we used to hold the dirt? The little, yeah, it's it's the original mower trailer. Wow, that's crazy. I think I actually paid him for it or maybe he just borrowed, I mean, he borrows whatever equipment he wants. So it's not like he needs an $800 trailer. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, so it took off with that. Uh, Hand blower. I, I had a hand blower and weed eater. It was a weed eater my dad found in the ditch. Uh, but when when I was, I, yeah, yeah, when I was younger, that I had actually taken apart and used the motor to try to put on an RC car. And <laughs> never got it to work. Oh, I brought yeah, it. I kind of remember. Yeah, that. I yeah. brought it back and I wow. got it working. That's how I was. Crazy. I had that and then the little push mower. So that's wild. And so take me through, like, you know, when I, when I think of people mowing lawns, because you know I did some some mowing as well. Like, it's a great way to make immediate cash. You mm-hmm. know, and, and if you do it right, it can be very successful. You know, what made you you know, start, you, you started working and you're like, okay, was this originally just supposed to be like a job or kind of starting your business? Did you realize at that point in time that you wanted to take it to the level that it is now? I think at first, you know, maybe, maybe right at first, I didn't know what the level was going to be, but that would have been right at first because I, I get heavily obsessed and like addicted to anything I do. So if I get involved in something, it's going to be all the way. Yeah. You know, and that's what I just kind of remember when I started, I was, I was walking up and down streets, handing out door hangers n- knocking on doors and, you know, blue jeans and cowboy boots. And so I was getting blisters on my feet, yeah. just trying to get the thing going. But, and that was really, most people aren't willing to do that though. And that's, yeah. I mean, about the most humbling and mm-hmm. kind of nerve wracking, right? Like you, you know, I guess it depends still on your had a job, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, during that oh, time. you're still working for the other Yeah, I was still there. working for the, for the first year of the business, I was still working for the body shop, you know, and that was an easily 40 to 60 hour a week job. Okay. So everything was on the side. Um, that was 2014. So, so at least you did have it. That was, that is one thing that I will say to people. I mean, <clears throat> If you're gonna start something, it is nice, if possible, like start it on the side, like start mm-hmm. working where you know, hey, yeah, you're grinding out during the week, but work, you know, spend some hours on the weekend, spend some nights. Like when you go from making money to absolutely nothing at all. Now, there's one thing about having your back against the wall and grinding. However, it is stressful. I mean, that's crazy, right? Yeah, Bur- burn the boats. Oh my god, I uh, just, I think you're better off like giving your chance the, you know. The ability to grow and succeed like that. Especially if, you know, it depends on like what you get led into. You know, I sure. didn't have business minded people around me. I didn't have like now looking at different situations. I see situations where a guy could get in with investors yeah, and they could start true. certain things and they've got the right minds around them and they've got all the help they need. Right. You know, I was getting in on a, on a ground floor of learning it, needing to make the funding myself, you know, not really just bootstrapping, I guess. Yep. Um, you know, and that's that's really why it works so well for me, and that's why originally I still like them, but they're really really hard. Uh, that's what I love about service business. Yeah, service business does not require much upfront to get in. Yeah, it also heavily degrades the service business because just anybody can get into it. That's true, and they yeah. can do, they can run it however they want. Yeah, so that's a good point. Um, when it, so. I will say this, when it comes to what you talked about with, uh, you know, growing and and being on the ground floor and, you know, you see now that people have investors, Mm -hmm. I think like social media and online has allowed for greater success in different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's something to be said about the approach that you took. I think the grind that you have now is also, dude, I mean, part of it's just personality and what you do. A big piece of that was you literally know what it was like, you know, there's no imposter syndrome for you Mm -hmm. of do I really belong here? Because you did it all, you know? Um, I think it's really hard when you come across people that were born on third base, if you will, you know, that aren't willing to put in the work, but think they know 
the best ideas and all that stuff. And, yeah. and and sometimes they do without having the back end, but man, I respect people way more when they did it themselves and now are helping people grow that also. You, you know what's really funny about what you just said that, that I find is so interesting, and I, I hear this with, you know, I've even talked to employees about something you just yeah. said. Yeah. Um, that yeah, even though I did a lot of that stuff and, you know, it, it, there was so much time and, and hours involved and days and time away from doing things I like to do, I still have imposter syndrome. Yeah. There's all the time, all the time where it's like, yeah. is this stuff real? Mm-hmm. You know, like it does it doesn't seem. And, and I can't say something I hear from more people that own a business mm-hmm. than just feeling like, man, I don't even know if I belong or or, or deserve what I'm doing. Yeah. You know. And I think at some point in time, that's going to happen to all of us. I mean, mm-hmm. it's you know, it's happened to me in some respect or another. You know, sometimes I'll look and I'm like, man, we've we've built a great practice, but like there's nothing that guarantees that we'll be here next week. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it, outside of us just continuing to grow and build. But you know, it's when you think about that, you're like, Oh shit. You know, like business is, is business when it comes to different things. So you want to make sure you do it right so that you are there for the long term. But, yeah. uh, the, the, the imposter syndrome is, is an interesting concept, I think, but I do feel that if you are that guy that has done all the work and that you're willing to do it all yourself, mm-hmm. You know, when you portray that to other people, like if you're somebody that's out and you is, you know, you're going to pick up the trash off the ground because that's just who you are, right? Well, it's very easy for you to tell other people, hey, you know, pick that up. But if you're not doing it, why would anybody else listen to you? you Needing know? something, yeah, you've never actually yeah. done work on or yeah. been part of, yeah. I mean, for me personally, you know, I feel like I, I always kind of like, you know, and you and I have talked a little bit about it in the past of just. Um, you know, even, you know, growing up for myself, I feel like I've taken a lot more control of, you know, my own actions now, how I want to do things. And it just like, I'm not as worried about what other people think of that stuff. But I, I truly feel it's also because now I'm supporting my moves and the things that I'm doing, mm-hmm. basing it on info. So there's confidence behind where you're at going forward yeah. because, you know, you're, you're putting in the work when you just want it to appear that you're doing it. You don't feel you don't as confident, you don't feel right because you're just, it's showing a part of it that's really not true. Yeah, and in a field like ours, I mean, yeah. especially where you've got like a, a lot of, of new, fresh labor that's probably lower paid, yeah. you know, it's great to be a guy that I would go out and do anything. Yeah. And I still will, not that I do it much anymore, not that I'm even out in the field hardly at all, but anybody that's been there for a while, or if I've had to go out and help someone, everybody knows that I can go out and do pretty much whatever job I need to do. I'm not just that guy. Some people would think I've had I've had new guys start and think, oh well, he must have just had a bunch of money given to him, and that's how he started yeah. this. And he, yeah. he, you know, that's yeah. how that's he just got lucky. Little yeah. 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 that's so, funny. Um, let me ask you an employee question. So everybody wants to be, you know, really backed. Uh, education wise and all these different things uh, have good grades and I do think that stuff's important I do let me put it out there but you know if somebody were to come to you and wanting a job mm-hmm. right do you want the employee that knows a lot about lawn care and landscaping or whatever or the guy that's a, a blank slate but just willing to work hard and is a sponge I would rather have the sponge I mean so I, a it, lot of times it's a no-brainer right yeah and, it, and it's like it's more more than anything I, I would rather just like hire for attitude. I can't teach you yeah. to act like, right. I can't teach you to act a certain way. I yeah. can teach you a lot of things, but I can't teach you to be driven or to have passion towards the things you do or care. Like I can't teach that. You're either that way or you're not. And a big piece of that puzzle to me is just taking ownership. Like a lot of people want to push off. Oh, I, I get, well, somebody didn't get me that information. Well, did you reach out to them and talk to them? You know, there's all these, you know, if, ands or buts and, like physically taking ownership is a really empowering, you know, trait to have. I think, uh, you know, that's something that we talk about a lot at our office mm-hmm. and with our employees. Because I would rather, if I ask you, Jacob, you know, did you get this part done, or, or you know, was this taken care of? I would rather you tell me no, mm-hmm. and like I didn't understand, or you know, no, it didn't. I was, you know, whatever it is, just flat out tell me no, it, it didn't get done. Okay, great. Let's figure out. Don't, don't push it. Yeah, no. don't, Every, I hate right. the, the yeah. person that points in both directions. Hey, well, right. why did this not happen? All, all these other right. people. It's like no, 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 no. 
Well, and, and by all means, like I'll probably have to take some responsibility too, because if you didn't get it done, clearly I didn't, you know, speak Lead something to you yeah, or, or do something. make sure that you knew what you were, you know, the task that was, mm-hmm. was going out. So it always kind of reverts back, but it's like finding the kinks, you know? And, and so that's why getting back to my, my uh, roundabout way of talking about it, that's why I think that having those type of sponge people and people that are just willing to grind are so important for mm-hmm. anybody's company. Yeah. Most definitely, most definitely. Somebody that just wants to learn, that has the attitude that I just I want to become an asset. Yeah, you know? and, and better yourself. It's so important what I've seen you do a lot of, and I love, you know, that uh, that you're bringing others with you, is really helping to empower your employees by, you know, continuing their growth mm-hmm. and, you know, recognizing them for, uh, you know, hey, you're improving, you know, you're, you're able to take on more responsibilities. Like, I think the reason that some people don't buy into business is because they don't feel like it's really theirs. They're not really yeah. a part of it. You know, they're just an employee. They're just making hourly wage. But when there's a physical part that's like, no, we can't do this without you. Mm-hmm. And we want you to grow as an individual so that with or without us, you're successful. That's like, the, when you create that type of connection, people never want to leave you because, yeah. hey, who helped you get and, there? And that's something that like, that you, you said it perfectly, you know. And we focused a lot on that with like our management team because the labor side of things that's mm-hmm. going to be it's it's yeah. it's, it's tough in our sure. field, um, and, and it just is what it is. It's not a big deal, but you know we're focusing most on that with management, and then I want that to trickle into the labor as well. Yeah. Um, you know, like the conference we went to the Tony Robbins conference and took Zoe. How was that? Amster was cool. earlier this year? It was awesome. You know, yeah. me and Melanie are here for for um, this conference for it's really industry related. What was the we were in Miami at a conference, awesome. Cardone's conference earlier this year, based on oh, sales. Yeah. Cool. You know? wow. um, and and just all the stuff like I've had my eyes open a lot to things that I didn't really see before, and I want to share that at least try to get it to everybody. But you can only afford to do so much so fast. Right. But get it out to the office so they can kind of see. Wow, there's a lot of opportunity in the world. Yeah. I mean, has that opened your eyes to some of that? Oh, like, yeah. Sorry to be throwing this off to like no, every person no, over here, but absolutely we should uh, pull up. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> you should just be in on this. You talk bad about me. <laughs> um, but you know, and then I, I can just—I've got the vision of I want to keep trickling that down the line, get yeah. that to more people, because you have to have people that are bought in. That you need to—you need to create like spectacular people you need to show them that there's a ton of opportunity because that's the thing nobody thinks there's any opportunity so right. they don't care and right. then they don't go anywhere but then they're still mad at you when they don't make more money right. uh, so one it's a challenge, challenge. Yeah, yeah no doubt yeah. one podcast that I've really liked and I uh, pass along to our employees just over this past couple of weeks is um, one of Andy Fursell's podcasts called like four things to become a better employee or something and it was really cool because it was just talking about getting down to the basics and like taking ownership, like how to become a leader, like recognizing that it's not just you, you know, it is somewhat you make a decision to, to functionally, you know, become that. Um, but I love podcasts like that, that then, I mean, it helps me too. Mm-hmm. Like it's not, it may not be as directly to me as maybe some other employees, uh, but it's still, there are parts that I pick up and I always look at like how you talk to people, you know, and uh, what do you do for your employees? I know like you're bringing some, you know, Melanie along with you and whatnot, but what do you do as a group that helps people's personal growth? I mean, personal growth is the group for the team. I'd say that's an area where we need to work on more. Um, you know, as far as the shop, this isn't so much personal growth, but we try to bring everybody together as yeah. far as it's good. personal growth and what can go on in their lives in the shop. You know, so we already got to, we pulled an idea from one of the, the Tony Robbins conferences we went to, to have a this weekly meeting based on certain topics that we've kind of morphed wow. into our own thing. Yeah. But then what we started doing is uh, we've kind of set it up where, the, you know, there's the crew members and then there's the crew leaders and then there's the office. Got it. And so now once a month we have, well, once a month we always have like our opening first Wednesday of every month, except for this yeah. one because right. of right. obvious Everything. reasons yeah. out of state. Um, where we get everybody together. We talk about the goals. We talk about what's going on. We talk about, um, you know, we have a, we call it the biggest badasses. So we have, uh, thing where everybody can vote. People get like that. Cool. People get like a fifty dollar gift card and twenty five dollar nice. gift cards nice. for that. You know, um, so that's a once a month thing. But then we bring the office and the leaders together to try to figure out like, hey, what do we need to be working on the company? Yeah. You know, that was something last month where we announced that we're going to be contributing to all the leaders since they're technically full time now, like year okay. round. That we're going to be contributing to health insurance. So. 
um, different like different things like that that really you know excite the team yeah, and yeah. bring the team up and, and try to I guess their personal growth with the company sure but the personal growth that I would really want to take to the team would be events and stuff mm-hmm. down the road um, it's the it's getting that to you know come to fruition I guess is, that's how you say the word I don't know, I make up words all the time but um, she's just, just melody I don't know if I said it right but uh, I almost just didn't say anything. I don't even know I, yeah. I just rush over it. so so but like getting that to happen yeah. and the funding for that because some of these events are extremely extremely yeah. expensive and getting it I'd love to take 10 people um, also you know if it was five thousand dollars a person that's that's a yeah. challenge that's a in a younger yeah. company so. yeah well I mean <clears throat> and this was just more free stuff but you know when I was uh, was an advisor with a company, Advocare, and I know that that's kind of been in the, the news as, you know, multi-level marketing and all this different stuff. And, you know, regardless of whatever your thoughts are on that type of of, uh, of field, you know, they would do these regional conferences mm-hmm. and, and national conferences. And it was, that's what got people amped up. And it was always the ones that went to those that were more successful. Yes. It's always, it's proven fact that if you go to those conferences, because one, you're working to be there and be recognized mm-hmm. and you're mingling with your group and yep. like your, you know, at the time it was kind of your upline leader, whatever that was, like people that were really crushing, you know, so that you could see how they were getting to do it and rub shoulders mm-hmm. with them. And then, you know, then they had the national conferences, you know, and I mean, you had to pay, it was a small fee, but yeah. just going and mingling with other people that want to grind, like it's unreal how much progress you can make as an individual based on the people that you're surrounded with yeah you're definitely you're the um you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with you know if your five yeah. friends are smokers you're gonna or your four friends yeah. are smokers you're the fifth one you know if your four friends are broke you're you're yeah. gonna be the fifth broke person Absolutely. as well so really whatever direction you want to head if you use that and then yeah like, like you said trying to incorporate that more and more into the company of more personal growth stuff you know as simple as like some of the cookouts we have but it could be awesome. could be even better you know and that's something we've really lacked on this year because this year's just been insane i mean you guys are growing there's a lot of stuff to that though too. yeah i mean you're in your first what five years yeah te- five fold i guess this way if you count the starting like it on the side it, this would be our sixth year that's crazy i mean it, you know just even a, a five year growth. I mean, from where mm-hmm. you guys are at is, is Especially for like the, I, I am happy with it because when you look at other fields, it's not as exciting. When you look at it, it's the service field, it's a little more exciting. You know, I think it is though. Like, I mean, I, what's exciting to me is that now we're at a point in time where any job can be cool, if you will. Right. Yeah. Like you guys have yeah. taken a, a service industry that, probably most people don't think a lot of and that's you know it's not to be mean it's just in general yes. that's like however it's viewed right or wrong not viewed well yes, yes. And, right. but <laughs> but when you guys are able to take a group and now it's cool right like you guys are making a, a great company out of this you're creating culture yeah i mean you guys are getting the people that like follow us right. on facebook yeah. you know and i mean i've looked at your you know your youtube has a lot of followers i mean that's fun. Like you can now take an idea that is, you could be a plumber, you could work on cars. You know, that's some of the things that Andy talks about so much in his podcast are just like, use whatever it is you do and make it interesting or even just purely document it. And yeah. you know, that's stuff that I'm trying to do more of like just documenting the start to finish of, you know, our progress where we're at. Some of the things like we had flooding in here mm-hmm. and I made a post box. I was like, you know what? Like it really sucks. I'm actually super pissed, but I mean, what am I going to do? And yeah. this is real life. I'm like, I and can't just look post back. the success parts. You can look back. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. That that's probably the best thing about having the YouTube channel. Yeah. I, every year, it seems like in August, I shoot a video about being stressed out every year. And so two years ago, I, yeah, not this year, but the year, two year, two seasons ago, I noticed that man, I, I've shot this video or I'm about to shoot a stressed out video and I look back and I'm like, huh, same time last year I had this problem. And then funny enough, every year this just fogs like over and I forget right. about it. And so I made another stressed out video this year and it took me, and it was in August. But the funny thing is, is I didn't even think about it this year. This year I didn't think about it happened before. I know this happens every year. It's a time of the year that's just stressful. Yeah. Yeah. and like a few weeks or a month goes by and you know i try to make three videos a week something like that's that awesome. uh, that you add to your youtube yeah channel. That I add to and YouTube what are channel. these videos typically about uh 
more business focused. Okay. You know, I it used to be a lot of lawn and landscape. Now it still is some, but now just different things. I do one that's uh, my biggest problem. So I like the like biggest problem I like I can come up with, yeah. and, you know, that's going on right now that's or cool. something that's affected us before because I think everybody's got a lot to learn from people's hard stuff. Definitely. And I apologize for interrupting, but on, you know, on that mark of, of, you know, my biggest mistake, I think that you're right. Like people do learn from like, we're both sitting down here because we're running, if you will, successful business. Mm -hmm. Like things are growing, you know, for whatever level of success is in your mind. Mm -hmm. For some people it's money, for some people it's, you know, patience, whatever it is. Um, but it's not so much like learning about like, you know, oh yeah, Jacob's great. You know, it's oh, I do want to hear that stuff, but I want to hear, you know, like what what happened that made you turn a page and that you go, wow, a light bulb clicked. You know, those are the things that get exciting. I think that's why your channel respects it so much too, because you're not just showing how great your company is. You're talking about what happened from here. And I think those how-to videos it's how, awesome. It exactly. makes a lot of sense. How to's and hard spots. I mean, yeah. it, that's why mentors. Well, I do want to go back to this one thing about the stressed out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I forgot about mm -hmm. it. I made some more videos, yes. and then I started looking back because I've got so analytical about my YouTube, and I'm trying to you know do certain things with it. And I noticed that the video that was shot this year and the video that was shot two years ago were not just in August; they were on the same day. Really? <laughs> I mean, Holy great. Cow. What day was it? Uh, I think it was August eighth. What is it like a, a Monday or is it it's uh, literally the same day? You no, know, you like same date. Yeah, so it's that could have been crazy, that changes, yeah. you know. But um, it's just crazy that it's, it's that it's that consistent that that's the time of the year where I'm stressed out about yeah. like the way our business runs. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's 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 just so weird to say. Now I completely forgot where we're going after that. But I had to get that thing back. No, no, I I get it, and that that is crazy. I mean, we will find. I mean. It, it's, it can be a seasonal thing. It can be just, you know, everybody's business operates so differently with mm -hmm. like quarter one, quarter two, however you design, you know, yeah. all of those things. It, it gets wild. But 